Hello, I'm Dawn DeMars. Um, I uh, have the luxury of working in this beautiful piano store as the store manager. My previous background is that um, I've spent 40 years in the piano industry. Um, part of that was as a consultant to piano factories. I've sat on the uh, board of the International Piano Manufacturers Association, and pianos have been a great part of my life. Um, I'm here today because many of our customers and other people who walk into piano stores around the world start by apologizing that they have no idea what they want. Well, that would naturally be so because most people have no idea what is even available. So today we're going to begin with a little basic piano knowledge and talk about what pianos are available in the modern world today. We're going to start by talking about two types of pianos. One type is a vertical, which fits up against the wall. Many of you might remember Grandma's old piano, and most likely it was a little spinet. It sounded bad, but it was a piano we got to play on. Today we make uh, vertical pianos of different sizes, and then we also have a piano called a Grand. It is horizontal, looks like this one here, and sits on three feet. Let's explore the world of vertical pianos, and we're going to start with the tallest one that's made today, which measures 52 inches high, and is called a professional upright. Here we have a vertical piano, which is the tallest piano that we make today, and this measures 52 inches from the floor to the top of the piano. Luckily, all vertical pianos measure in width approximately the same, the smallest ones being about 57 inches wide and the tallest ones being about 60 inches wide. So anyone who has five feet of wall space will have plenty of room for a vertical. Tall pianos like this are referred to as a professional upright, and that's because of the fact that professionals demand better sound, so they would be buying a piano like this. Um, most of the piano buyers of the world buy vertical pianos for the reason of space. Here in the United States, of course, we enjoy larger homes, so many of us have grand pianos in our houses. Uh, the reason that this also is a professional known piano is because this one also has the pedals that work similar to a grand rather than the limited pedal functions of a vertical. Why would one want a taller piano than a shorter piano is a question that many people ask. One, all pianos have what we call a soundboard made of spruce, if the piano is any good at least, and that is the speaker of the piano. So the more square inches of spruce soundboard one would have, the bigger the sound will be. So thus, a taller piano giving you more square inches of soundboard will have a bigger sound. The other major factor is the string length. If you can get a taller piano, you have longer strings in it, and when the strings get longer, the bass section gets fatter, and therefore it produces a bassier sound or a more dark, warm sound with depth. So basically, the shorter piano, the tinklier or brighter the piano will sound. Some people refer to it as tinny. And then the taller the piano, the more bass and the more mellow the sound would be. It's richer in sound. So if one can afford a bigger piano, you'll enjoy the sound of it much better. So, and of course, the taller the piano, the more raw materials are in it and the more expensive it becomes. Now let's move to the next piano in size, which is a 48 inch tall piano, which is also referred to as a professional upright. And this is the 48 inch piano which is a very popular model, and this, this particular one is a Yamaha Model E1, which is one of the most referred pianos by piano teachers for their students. Next, we will go look at a studio piano. And this is a 45-inch studio piano. Many of you have probably seen these in schools. This is a popular choice of churches and schools not only because it has good sound and it's very durably made, it also has um, reinforced legs that so that you can move it easily down hallways. Um, this is kind of referred to as the church or school piano, but many people find this a popular one to have, especially in their family room. 
uh, a studio piano can also be purchased in a more modern K style with the popular finishes like this one. This is an example of a studio piano, but instead of being designed for schools and churches, this is more for the modern family. This particular one is in polished mahogany, and they also come in black and other colors. The next size we're going to talk about is what we call a console piano. Console pianos measure from 40 inches to 44 inches tall, and they come in a huge variety of furniture styles made for mostly American homes. The furniture styles of the traditional piano in America come in Queen Anne, Hancock, uh, they have curved legs in French provincial styles with cherry finishes, just about any, any furniture style that one would like to uh, have in their living room. This is a classic example of a modern console. This particular brand is um, Kanabi. Uh, the ones sitting here are Yamaha. They fairly look the same. There are some technical differences in them. And these are quite popular for what we call entry-level students. Students who are just beginning the piano because the price is less. This is something that most people consider when they're buying their first piano. Next, we have a console which is a little shorter, and that console measures 40 to 42 inches tall. And these are in modern finishes of mahogany, black, they come in white, and these pianos will be the least expensive pianos to start with because of the fact that they are shorter and have less materials in them, and certainly that would indicate a smaller price. Um, Many families, uh, this would be a great choice for a family to keep the budget low instead of having to buy an older 30, 40 year old piano uh, as a used one that will constantly need maintenance and work for keeping it in tune. Before we move to the grand pianos, I wanted to say something about price. In vertical pianos, the very best handmade ones that come from Europe, you would expect to be in the 30 to $40,000 price range. Wow, that's what my customers say. Then in the very least expensive pianos in the consoles, if they were made in China, you would expect to pay around $2,000 to $2,500 for them. Uh, prices vary certainly by the type of piano and the size. Uh, if one in the United States looked at a consumer's report, they would recommend that you spend somewhere between four dollars and $5,000 for a really good one but the price ranges will start in the $2,000 area and go to $30,000. But once you visit a store and you look at the different options, I think the pricing will make sense with the, whatever budget that you want to set for yourself. Now we're going to talk about grand pianos. Grand pianos are the type of piano that are built horizontally and that stand on three legs. Certainly, um, in this country where we have spacious living rooms, these are quite popular. Um, they add beauty to the living room, plus you and yourself or your children can enjoy playing them. They sound better because the sound comes out of not only the bottom, because the sound comes out of the bottom of the piano, but with a raised lid like this, the piano sound also comes out of the top of the piano. Now, in grand pianos, there are many sizes. People come in asking for a baby grand, but they have really no idea what that is. So a standard baby grand measures five foot three inches from the very front of the piano to the back of the tail, the very back of the piano. They make pianos as small as four foot seven, which is really not a musical instrument. The strings are too short to have much sound. So therefore we would recommend getting something at least five foot from the front to the back to have a decent performing piano. Uh, standard baby grands are five foot two to five foot three. The smallest you should consider is five foot. Now they also have something called a large baby grand. And large baby grands are usually five foot eight to five foot nine, also measuring from the front to the back. Our customers are quite shocked that you can actually have a player piano run by an iPod. So player pianos no longer have paper rolls in which you have to pump or plug into the wall. In modern player pianos, it's digital. 
So you can play software uh, by having a CD and putting it in a CD player that is specialized for a piano. Or in this case, simply download the software off the internet through your computer into a specialized iPod and from that you can play the piano. Um, we also have more sophisticated piano player systems which work off of computers and we'll take a look at those a little bit later. This is an example of a 5 foot 8 inch piano which would be considered a large baby grand. Once you get to six foot, we just call them a grand piano. Now we're going to look at the other spectrum of grand pianos. We've already discussed the smaller ones, the baby grands, and now we're here with some of the world's most famous pianos in the concert grand size. Concert grands are nine foot through nine foot six. The biggest, baddest piano there is in the world is a Busendorfer Imperial Grand that measures nine foot six in length and has an extra octave of bass notes, making it the largest piano built. And you would find that in the great concert houses and symphony halls in Vienna, London, even Hamatsu, Japan, which is the cultural musical center of Japan. This beautiful piano here is made by Schimmel in Germany. This one happens to be sold to a home. However, most concert brands do end up on performance concert stages. And this is a Busendorfer, and this one measures seven foot four from the very front to the very back. Busendorfer is acclaimed in the world, and most people agree that this is the finest piano made today. They made the pianos for Mozart and Chopin. Uh, their factory is located in Vienna. There are many things in the construction of a Busendorfer that are unlike any other piano uh, that make it uh, have this acclaimed reputation. Uh, the concert brands that we've been looking at are in the vicinity of $125,000 to $275,000. This particular Busendorfer is in the price range of about $125,000. Um, and the piano is built of materials that have been aged naturally for any period of six to ten years, which certainly means that the cost goes up. The next piano we're going to speak of is another Busendorfer. It's a six foot seven piano, so it is also called a grand, but not a concert grand. This piano is beautiful and the art case is handmade. Kind of to sum up the different available sizes of grand pianos, the largest are the concert grands and they come in sizes of nine foot six, nine foot, and then we have semi-concert grands at around seven foot. A plain old grand piano, to be titled a grand piano, has to be six foot in length or greater and therefore anything under six foot would be considered a baby grand. Price ranges of grand pianos certainly vary. The very least expensive ones uh, from China are in the $4,000 price range. Not much of a musical instrument, but, but nonetheless a beautiful little baby grand for someone's home. Usually teachers will recommend getting at least a standard baby grand of five foot three to five foot eight and usually those are gonna be in the price ranges of seven to $20,000. Uh, once again, if you went to Consumer's Digest and asked, uh, or at least looked up, what should I pay for a baby grand? It'll recommend that you spend ten to $15,000 for something that's good, that will last, and has a good warranty. Now, our last thing we're gonna look at is a player piano the most high-tech variety that one can purchase today. This piano here, as you can see, has a music rack on it that includes a 17-inch high-def screen. So not only will this piano play the piano automatically for you in your home, but you can download DVDs so that the, you can watch the artist play, but the artist will actually be playing your piano. The files are managed through iTunes and is run by a mini Mac computer. As you can see, we have a mouse pad and a mouse here, so we're fully computerized. I can get my email on this computer should I choose to, but basically that's supplied so that one can download software easily. 
If you didn't want this look, you can remove this from your piano. And as you can see, I'm going to pick up a little uh, controller here. Here's my Minimac computer system. And if I ask it to play, I'm now going to have David Foster and Bocelli. Bocelli down a little bit while I tell you some other things. This particular player system not only allows you to watch DVDs and concerts of classical nature or any type of music that you'd like while your piano plays live, but it also has a full lesson format. It has piano karaoke. You can play the piano yourself. It will record you and it will score the notations on the screen so you can edit it. And then naturally you'd want to burn a CD for the rest of your family. I'd like to thank you for joining me today. This has been Don DeMars with the basics of pianos. Um, for further information on this player system or any other pricing and brand information that you might need, please uh, go to your computer and log on to keyboardconcepts.com. We'll be glad to answer any of your questions. So bye for now.